Hey everybody, welcome to Kevin's Garage. Today I'm going to be working on this 1983 Johnson 15 horsepower two-stroke. I got it for 50 bucks from a junkyard and now I'm going to tear into it and see if I can get it to run. Let's go. So just to get started, um, when I first got it, there was a like kid's plastic horseshoe that had been tied here and was being used as a pull start. So I went ahead and 3D printed that just to make sure everything could turn over right. This was originally electric start and they have removed that. The wiring inside doesn't look too bad. Um, it does look a little rusty. Looks like your average Johnson two-stroke. It's kind of funny because I have a 1996 Johnson two-stroke that I just put a fin on. You can see that in another video. And the internals look identical except for the starting mechanism. I guess this is different too. And my newer one, this is all one unit instead of being two individual coils. It does turn over and it does move. And it feels like there is compression in it. The throttle linkage was completely seized up, as well as this. So I was able to get the tiller handle off, was able to get this gear removed, the connecting rod in there removed, and this removed. But unfortunately had to destroy a couple pieces in the process. Um, so I will be buying a couple parts. Hopefully they aren't too expensive. So here you can see a couple teeth missing off there. It's kind of banged up. This one's good though thankfully. Okay, so I got my new parts in the mail and they're ready to go on. This is the idle speed adjustment knob. That was like 12 bucks. And this is the uh, part of the throttle linkage and that was like 20 bucks. So they're all OEM parts. I almost got duped into getting a 3D printed one. Um, the actual OEM part is the same price. So just look out for that. All right, now we're gonna go put these on the motor. So the idle speed knob right here is fairly easy to get to. If it was only that I was dealing with, I could do that no problem. But I need to get this gear down in that little area right there. So to do that, this has to come out. To take that out, this has to come out. To take this out, I need to remove the airbox. So it'll be a little bit of a disassembly product process, but in the end, it'll be worth it. So this piece fits right in that hole, but with that gear there, you can't get it. So what you have to do is this piece just lifts right off. A little tight, my big fingers. And then the piece that it pivots on can just pull out with some pliers. So now we can put our new piece in where it needs to go. So before putting it all together, I'd recommend just a little bit of grease. Keep it from seizing up like it did before. It does get a little messy. And then we follow it up with this gear. You gotta make sure that these gears are all lined up exactly where they need to be before you put that pin in. And then finally, the pin that holds it all in place. starter back on just be sure you have that spring right there it helps this operate correctly this knob was seized and also broken I went to put this one in and I'm still having some fitment issues so what I'm gonna have to do is take a little bit of sandpaper to this and get it all cleaned up so this guy will fit in so I have a little bit of rolled up sandpaper here and just kind of spin it in place Okay, so we got her all back together. Now let's take her outside and see if she fires up. Keep in mind, I have already rebuilt the carburetor on this, so we should be good to go.
Thanks for watching another episode of Kevin's Garage. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up button. Also, subscribe to my channel for more content. I'll see you next time.